I feel like the biggest MMA journalism story this week in regards to like news relating to MMA journalism in itself has been the uh, sort of feud between Chael Sonnen and Luke Thomas. Uh, this was surprising to me. I mean, like when a fighter retires, it's very rarely that you'll find some kind of beef or something like that come out of it. And at the very least, you never find it between fighters and journalists. But, you know, it's a crazy time we live in. Uh, so basically, I've been following the story a little bit. I mentioned it in one of the earlier episodes this week. Now I feel like I've seen enough to actually give my own thoughts on it. So, Chael, you played yourself. I keep thinking of that meme, the, the meme with DJ Khaled, where he's like, congratulations, you played yourself. That's exactly what Chael did here. Uh, Chael was the McGregor of McGregor Mayweather. He made the most noise, he absolutely had the, the biggest and strongest following, his fans were completely on his side, but he walked in unprepared. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just break it down a little bit. So in the first video, I feel like Ch Ch Chael Sonnen took a lot of things out of context. I mean, Luke Thomas, he, did, he released a video where he was like, uh, uh, Chael Sonnen is a very, very good fighter who got close to a lot of championships, uh, but he, you know, he never really got to the, the super great status. And I guess a lot of it comes down to how do you define a great fighter? I mean, right? Because there alone you have the whole, we have the the thesis of did Luke Thomas, uh, you know, speak accurately or not? And I guess it's kind of hard to do. I mean, in my opinion, like a great fighter, not necessarily someone who has to have won a UFC championship. I mean, there's a ton of great fighters who who never did that. But it, like, if you were to list the the 20 greatest fighters of all time, would Chael Sonnen be on that list? He probably wouldn't be on mine. Was he great for the sport of MMA? Absolutely. Did he take the sport to new heights in regards to promotion and showmanship? <laughs> Without doubt. Did he give us one of the most exciting fights in UFC middleweight history against Anderson Silva? Irrefutably. Um, is he one of the 20 or even 30 greatest MMA fighters of all time? Not sure. But either way, I mean, that doesn't make Chael less great as such. I mean, him as... I almost feel like Chael Sonnen the person is greater for MMA than Chael Sonnen the fighter. I mean, there's his role in amateur wrestling, there's his role as an analyst. Uh, there's, I mean, honestly, his YouTube channel where he breaks down fights and all that stuff is, is great. But, yeah, either way, I don't feel like anything Luke Thomas said was mean-spirited or like went after Chael as a person. I mean, the things he brought up, I mean, most of the stuff he said about Chael was actually good stuff. You know, he was just questioning like, oh, was this, you know, one of the greatest fighters out there? Uh, now, I do feel like there were perhaps some things that were that can be interpreted as uh, a little, I don't know, sharp, perhaps a little bit edged uh, certain comments, which is okay. I mean, I can understand Chael uh, getting a bit of a rise out of that, but Chael's response uh, seemed much more personal. It definitely felt like he took it personal. And in some ways I can understand that. A fighter retiring is, uh, it's an emotional time. And, you know, you you these people have focused their entire lives for, for you know, several years as their lives have been solely focused on competition and combat sports. Now, all of a sudden, that comes to, that changes. They have to find a different way to, to pursue their dreams. And uh, Chael Sonnen, he famously told his father before he passed away that he was going to win a title and he never did. And I actually thought, I was very surprised that Brett Okamoto of ESPN, one of the most respected journalists in the game, someone who I admire a lot, that he would actually ask Chael Sonnen after his knockout loss, what would you tell your late father? I felt like that was in poor taste. Um, I feel like that's maybe something you can talk about in a personal one-on-one -on -one interview. Uh, when you've been talking a little bit with a fighter and you kind of have an existing relationship with them, I would never, ever ask a question like that at a uh, 
at a press conference asking a fighter about his dead father and the promise he made to him after, and then, you know, after a knockout loss? No, I would never do that. I thought that was in poor taste. So if anything, Chael should have gone after Brett Okamoto, but no, he went after Luke Thomas. Uh, and a lot of the other stuff that Chael brings up, I mean, he brings up good points about himself. Uh, he definitely does a good job selling himself as a fighter, which is something he's always been great at. Uh, I mean, let's face it, the whole, uh, his famous call out of Anderson Silva, uh, it wasn't that great. Uh, I mean, basically all he said was, Anderson Silva, you absolutely suck. Uh, but it was just, you know, it was the gravitas that he said it with and it was the, the rest of the speech. And it was just like, it was a different, um, it was, you know, just the way he conducted himself. So, Chael definitely did a great job selling himself, but then came the counter from Luke Thomas. Uh, and Luke Thomas started off by making a perfect point. Like, he could not have made the point any better. He was like, Chael Sonnen has my phone number. If he truly wanted to, he could call me and we could sort this out. Honestly, this whole beef could have been solved with one phone call which Chael elected not to do. He elected to, instead of calling Luke Thomas on some of his comments on the phone, he called him out in front of the whole world on the internet, on his YouTube channel. That's gonna get a response. I would have done that someone calls you out with a, 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 a YouTube video so the whole world sees it. You don't just give that person a polite phone call. They've raised the stakes, you have to do that as well. And Luke Thomas came prepared. He had fact-checked every single claim that Chael Sonnen made and refuted a lot of them. He refuted uh, uh, comments in regards to uh, uh, Chael not getting any any cred for his win over Paulo Filo. That was not true. Uh, there were many other claims that he made that uh, weren't factually correct. And Luke Thomas, he seemed just as sort of flabbergasted as a lot of other people and that like, I wasn't even trying to insult you. Uh, why are you taking it this way? Like he, he, the whole time I felt like for the most part Luke Thomas kept his cool. Uh, I could definitely tell that he was frustrated, which is understandable. I mean, one of the you know, most uh, forward and outspoken MMA fighters in the world calls you out and, you know, uh, and insults you. I mean, I felt Chael insulted Luke Thomas. Uh, he's, you know, said that uh, oh, Luke Thomas has a little show that 15 people watch, something like that. Uh, he said that Luke Thomas was green with envy. Let me just address this real quick, because this is something that I read in the comments. MMA fans, or at least Chael Sonnen's fans, seem to think that us, like in the MMA journalism and reporting business, somehow are jealous of Chael for his success on YouTube. Uh, no. Uh, do I wish I had some of the YouTube views he has? Yeah, absolutely. I totally wish I had those numbers. Uh, but good on good on him. I mean, it's it's the same way I regard anybody who does any kind of successful MMA reporting or journalism. It's like, okay, good on you. I'm not gonna use up my day being being jealous. I'd rather step up my own game so that I can get there. Uh, I don't know anyone who has any bad feelings about. Chael Sonnen doing, having a successful YouTube channel and being a, a great analyst. Uh, nobody's got a problem with that as far as I know. So no, Luke Thomas is not green with envy. I just feel, yeah. And uh, then we have, I mean, it, it, this is funny. This is like uh, the, the second round in the Anderson Silver rematch when Chael Sonnen gets overzealous and goes for the world's most ill-advised spinning back fist in round two, misses it horribly, falls over next to the cage and gets TKO'd. That is what Chael Sonnen's response video was. Because, <laughs> first of all, it's called, does Luke Thomas owe me an apology? No, he doesn't. In fact, you probably owe Luke Thomas an apology for, if not for the previous video, then for this one, because Chael uploads a video and admits he didn't even watch Luke Thomas's response. He makes this video based on things that people in his surroundings have told him about Luke's video. 
Not a good look, man. Uh, and for everyone who, who thinks that like us MMA reporters are jealous of Chael Sonnen, Chael Sonnen couldn't do the most simple journalistic integrity move ever, which was to actually watch the video you're talking about. You don't see a lot of movie critics just write a review without having seen the film. Uh, you don't see a lot of journalists and reporters uh, make a story without actually knowing uh, about what, yeah, knowing what they're talking about. And we can, you can tell even by the comments, uh, in, by Chael's own, by his own fans who follow his YouTube channel religiously. Uh, <laughs> big Chael fan, but he is way off the mark and this one should actually listen to what, to what Luke for a start. I'm assuming he means to what Luke said. Uh, you didn't see Luke's response video, Boy Stop Playing. I thought Chael accused Luke of being jealous of his media success. Am I mistelling that? Yep, sorry Chael, you are. Damn Chael getting bashed by his own fans. Still love you Chael, but watch Luke's video. You got brain damage, bro. Luke was pretty respectful to you as to all fighters. I was on Chael Sonnen's side, and he's still the man, but I think Chael watched his whole response and got his ass handed to him and is pretending he never watched it. Yeah, I mean, if your own fans are turning on you, that, that says something. And I thought this video, I don't know why he did it. I don't know why Chael would do this. It's not a good look, especially if you're trying to make it seem like other people are jealous of your journalistic integrity, you kind of shot yourself in the foot there. So anyway, that was my thoughts on that little drama that's been going on this week. Uh, and I try to look at it as a outside view, but for the most part, I pretty much think that Luke Thomas was in the right here. Perhaps some comments were a bit uh, perhaps some of its phrasing could have been a bit better to, to sound a little bit less accusing of Chael or something like that or to sound a, a little bit nicer but I mean when you're talking about a fighter who proudly calls himself a bad guy you shouldn't necessarily have to you know run your run your uh, your words through a, a child filter to make sure there's no risk of anyone getting one percent offended